Hello, I'm Mary and thank you so much for coming. I pray that as you listen to this video today, your life will not remain the same again. Place of thanksgiving be registered before the Lord this morning. Lord, we thank you, we bless your name, glorify your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise, all the glory, all the honor and all the adoration belongs unto your holy name. Thank you and thank you. And thank you, and thank you, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. We give all the praise and glory to you. Accept our thanksgiving. Now begin to ask him for an encounter. This morning I've come to encounter you and your word. Speak directly to me this morning. Let your word that comes forth address my life. Let it redress my situation. Let it turn around my story. In the name of the Lord Jesus, this must be for me a landmark encounter that will change my level supernaturally. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord Jesus, this morning our eyes are fixed upon you. We are grateful for the privilege you have given us to be in your presence on this first Sunday of the 10th month of this year. You have been faithful. You have been good. You have been merciful. Your grace has been sufficient. And for all of it, we say thank you. This morning, our eyes are fixed, expecting to receive from you. Send your word our way. Give each one of us a tangible encounter today. Let every concern be turned to a testimony today. Let every tear be wiped away today. Yeah. And let the name of Jesus be glorified here today. Yeah. We thank you because we know you have done it already. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Yeah. And somebody believe, say loud, amen. Yeah. Give Jesus a big hand of praise and please, you may be seated in his presence. Praise God, fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations, amen and amen. This morning we're beginning a series of teachings for our Sunday services in this month that is captioned, Engaging the Wonders of Praise. Engaging the Wonders of Praise. Remember that our prophetic focus, as was read to us earlier, is God still works wonders through praise. Can we say that together? Let's say with confidence and assurance, God still works wonders through praise. This month, through praise, God will do wonders in your life. If you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. So again, our series of teachings is engaging the wonders of praise. It's important to recognize this morning that every scriptural subject demands spiritual understanding if we are going to experience what it offers. In Colossians 1 verse 9, the Bible is very clear in telling us, it says that, Colossians 1 verse 9, it says that, I desire that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So there is what the Bible refers to as spiritual understanding, and that is required for every scriptural commandment. That means it's not enough for you just to know what the word says and do what the word says. You must have understanding if you are going to see the results that God has ordained for us. And that applies to every subject of scriptures, including praise. In Psalm chapter 47 and verse 7, the Bible tells us there that we are to praise God with understanding. So our praise can only become outstanding when we engage the force of spiritual understanding. My prayer today is that for each one of us, the eyes of our understanding shall be enlightened. If you believe it, say loud, amen. amen. Therefore, it means that only those who understand the mysteries of the kingdom, when they engage it, command mastery in the adventure of life. It's one thing to know, it's another thing to understand. And it is understanding that determines the mastery that you are now able to command. 
Mark chapter 4, verse 11, it says, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but unto them that are without, these things are in parables. Those who operate in the depth of understanding are the ones who command mastery in the adventure of life. This also connotes that in our spiritual adventure, our level of understanding is what determines our experience. Mark, Matthew chapter 13 and verse 23, the Bible says that these are they that receive the seed on good ground. It said, they, he that heareth the word and understandeth it. And the word then brings forth fruit, some hundred, some sixty, some thirtyfold. Each one's productivity is a product or an outcome of the depth of that person's understanding. This is why you and I must seek God in this month to deepen our understanding on the subject of praise. It's not enough to know praise. It's not enough to even sing praise. It is vital to understand the mystery of praise. Please hear this. Every kingdom commandment carries within it hidden secrets. It is those who walk in the light of the secrets of those commandments that are able to procure the blessings of that commandment. Every commandment of scripture is ordained for our profiting. The Bible is very clear about that. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. It said all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable. So every scriptural truth is profitable. But the profit of the scriptures is a product of our understanding of the truth. That means that this month you and I must seek God to deepen our understanding of the mystery of praise. When our understanding gets to the depth, its manifestation gets to its height. For each one of us, in this month, I see our praise provoking unusual dimension of wonders. If you believe that, you say louder, amen. amen. I said, if you believe that, you say louder, amen. amen. And this is very important because when we're talking about understanding here, we're not talking about the carnal or natural understanding. We are talking about the spiritual understanding. The Bible is very clear. It says that we are to have the knowledge of his will in all wisdom. Wisdom talks about application of the truth. But then spiritual understanding that is going beyond the letters to the spirit. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 6, the Bible is clear. It says to us there, he has made us ministers of the New Testament. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. So it means that there is something beyond the surface level when it comes to any subject of scriptures. It's so important for us to understand that it is when we get to the spirit of the word that we begin to experience the wonders in the word. Every provision of scriptures demands the spiritual understanding of the believer before it can begin to deliver in the life of that person. This is why spiritual understanding becomes vital and critical. Jesus speaking said in John chapter 6 and verse 63, he said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. He was talking about the word. So when he talked about the flesh, he's not talking about physical flesh. He's talking about at the surface of natural words. He said that those words do not profit anything. It is the spirit of the word that produces result. That's why two people can hear the word. One hears the letter, the other one hears the spirit. The ones that hear the spirit will get results. Every word from God demands that each one of us positions for the spirit therein in order to begin to access the wonders therein. For every scriptural truth, there is the letter, surface level, it kill it. But there is the spirit, the mystery level, it quicken it. It is the mystery dimension that quickens. That's why each one of us must be, must be de must desire of God that in this month he will open our eyes to see the mysteries. Not to hear the stories. Not even to quote the scripture, but to see the mystery. Paul the apostle speaking in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 17. It said there, verse 17 and 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge. So there are things you can know, but we need revelation of it. 
in the knowledge of him, he said, now the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. So there is a demand for our spiritual eyes to be open to the mysteries of the truth. The secret of the truth. So that we begin to walk actually in the light of it. What that means is that you don't get light by just knowledge. You get light by spiritual understanding. A man who knows but does not understand is a man that is walking but not in light. To walk in the light, you need to operate in the realm of spiritual understanding. Now, somebody says, what will it take for me to get spiritual understanding? The Bible is very clear. It says, if you are going to get that, you must be in the spirit. Revelations 1 verse, verse 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard. If you are going to pick what the spirit is saying, then you must be in the spirit. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 25. The Bible says to us that if we live in the spirit, if we are spiritually alive, let us also walk in the spirit. So it takes being in the spirit to capture what the spirit is showing. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 13 and verse 14. The Bible makes us understand there. It says which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And it says, but the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Things are not going the way that they are supposed to go. And you are told now begin to praise. Naturally, it looks very stupid. But inside the foolishness of that instruction is the one that will change the situation. So if you are going to begin to experience what God has ordained from any scriptural truth, it is vital that you and I must be in the spirit. I pray to, for each one of us this morning that via the encounter of today, we shall be repositioned supernaturally. <laughs> to be in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe it, say a loud amen. I say, you believe it, say a louder amen. amen. You believe it, say the loudest amen. amen. From now, I see each one of us walking practically in the spirit. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, it is being in the spirit that helps us to receive what the spirit is saying or showing part time. And that helps us to get to the point of spiritual understanding so that we can begin to walk in the light of the truth. And remember, this applies to every subject of scriptures, including the subject of praise. However, it's important for us to understand that for your praise and my praise to be acceptable before God, there are some prerequisites, some conditions, some requirements. And we'll look at a few of them very quickly. Number one is salvation. Why? Because only the living can praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter, Isaiah chapter 38 and verse 20. The Bible, verse, verse 19, he said, The living, the living, he shall praise thee, O Lord, as I do this day. And the Father to the children shall make known thy truth. Who are the living? He that had the Son of God hath life. First John chapter 5, verse 11 and verse 12. He that had the Son of God had life. So until you are born again, your praise does not register before God. You see, singing on earth does not equal to praising before the eye of God. Until a man is born again, his song does not register before God. Our access to God's presence when it comes to our praises is a product of our connectivity through salvation. Until a man or woman is truly born again, their praise cannot produce results. Secondly, is one must walk operate in the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. It is vital. If our praise is going to produce results, we must walk practically in the fear of the Lord. Amos chapter 5 and verse 23. The Bible tells us there, it says, Take thou away from me the noise of thy song, because I will not hear thy melody of thy vows. Take away the noise of your song. It's talking about those who have displeased him. Those who have, who have, lived, who have done things contrary to what God desires. Those who live lives that are contaminated by sin. Those who are not walking in the fear of the Lord. He said, let them take away the noise of their song. Take away the noise of their song. So to, to God, their songs become noise. That is, sounds that displease. 
That is what occurs when an individual is not walking in the fear of the Lord. Number three is you must get rid of offenses. Matthew 11 and verse 6. The Bible says, Blessed is he that is not offended in me. Don't allow any offense. Don't praise God with offenses in your heart. Don't be offended at God. Don't be offended at his word. Don't be offended at his church. If you are going to see the wonders of praise, then you must clear your heart of offenses. Shout hallelujah. It takes an offense-free heart to see your praise produce results. My prayer is that for each one of us, beginning from today and all through this month, your praise and my praise will produce supernatural results. If you believe it, say aloud, amen. Now, in our, in our prophetic focus this morning, we saw something very, very striking. That we observed that thanksgiving and praise is one of the most potent weapons, yet it is neglected. It's neglected but powerful. So it's important that we begin to uncover some of the things that praise has to offer. And we saw a number of them in that epistle that was read to us. But we'll look at them in more detail right now this morning. Number one is it secures, it secures divine presence. Praise secures divine presence. Psalm chapter 22 and verse 3. The Bible says, Thou art holy, thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. What that means is that praise is the habitat of God. The presence of God requires the availability of praise. Until praise is available, God is not available. If you are going to activate the manifest presence of God, you do that via the engagement of praise. Somebody may say, but God is everywhere. Yes, but God does not manifest everywhere. The manifestation of the presence of God is activated by the availability of the praises of man. When praise is made available, God's presence is made manifest. When praise is made available, God's presence is made manifest. That's why the Bible tells us in the book of Psalm chapter 100 and verse 4, it said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his court with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. That is to reach God thanksgiving, to be with God praise, to be around God thanksgiving. Everything that is required for God is requi requires our praise. Our praise is the habitation in which God's presence begins to manifest. It is the habitation. In other words, it is through praise we construct a conducive environment for God to manifest. It is through praise. So what is in praise? God is in praise. Every time your praises are going up, his presence is coming down. The presence of God is God's response to the praises of man. If you look at the call to worship that was read this morning, Psalm 114, beginning from verse 1. I love how the scripture puts it. It said, when Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of a strange language, look at what it says. Judah was his sanctuary. His sanctuary is his habitation. He says, and Israel was his dominion. What is Judah? Judah is praise. Praise was his sanctuary. Israel was his dominion. When the sanctuary of praise is created, the dominion of his presence is manifested. That's what we saw with, with Israel. As a result of that, they said that <laughs> the sea saw it and fled. Jordan was driven back. He said that the mountains skipped like rams, the hills like little lambs. He said, what ailed the old sea that thou fledest? Thou Jordan that thou was driven back. And thou you mountains that you skip like rams. And you little hills like lambs. He said, tremble thou, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. That is inside Judah was divine presence. In the same vein, inside the life of the, pray, of, of the praiseful is God's manifested presence. 
Is somebody getting what God is saying? The manifestation of God's presence is activated by the praises of man. So yes, God is everywhere. But God manifests with the praiseful. He manifests with the praiseful. He manifests with the praiseful. Now listen, if we say that praise is the habitation of God, that means that occasional praise equals occasional visitation. A lifetime of praise or a lifestyle of praise equals divine habitation. God stays with the praiseful. When your life is consistent in praise, his presence saturates your life. When your life is consistent in praise, his presence saturates your life. And hear this, it is the degree of divine presence at work in any individual life that determines the degree of dominion that person experiences. Shout hallelujah. Remember what he said, Judah was his sanctuary and Israel became his dominion. Judah was his sanctuary and Israel became his dominion. Judah was his sanctuary and Israel became his dominion. A lifestyle of praise will always activate for us divine presence. Today, I see grace coming upon each one of our lives to maintain a life of praise. That's why one of the enemy's tricks is to make you to begin to complain. To make you to begin to murmur. Why? He wants to derail you from divine presence. He wants to take you out of the cover of divine presence. He wants to take you from the canopy of divine presence. But from this day onward, Satan has failed in that agenda. Amen. If you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I said, if you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. If you believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. We all know that nobody can come to your father's house from school. No matter how wicked the teacher is and begin to flog you from school inside your father's house. But when you leave your father's house and go to school, then the flogging is permitted. When they finish flogging you, they can give explanation to your father. He was stubborn, he was this, he was that. But when you are inside your father's house, they can't be flogging you from your school there. No, why? Because you are now under cover. Is somebody getting what God is saying? When you are under the cover of divine presence, Satan cannot be tormenting you. It's when you leave divine presence that he begins to beat you. Many lives today are under torment because they have allowed themselves to leave the canopy of his presence. And how did they leave? Complaining, murmuring, just all kinds of contrary talk. And as a result of that, they have found themselves outside of divine cover. And when you are on the outside divine cover, you remain vulnerable. But when you are under divine cover, you remain untouchable. From now, the grace to maintain such a life of continuous, consistent, persistent praise, may that grace be communicated to each one of us. Yes. Number two is that it provokes divine intervention. It is through praise that God steps in. Praise is man's invitation for divine intervention. Praise is man's invitation for divine intervention. Praise is man's invitation for divine intervention. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the Bible tells us how that the, you know, the nation of Judah was surrounded by three nations. Now, Judah is one-twelfth of the nation of Israel. Israel is a, was a small nation. Judah was one-twelfth of a small nation. Now, three nations gathered together against Judah. And the Bible tells us that they went before the Lord. They fasted and they prayed. And they said, Lord, we don't have any might against these people. We can't fight them. This battle, if we, we cannot afford to fight it. It is a battle that is calculated against us. He said, but our eyes are upon you. And they prayed and they fasted. And the Bible tells us in verse 17, it said that the prophet came and spoke and said, you will not need to fight in this battle. Stand still and see the salvation of our God. And the Bible tells us in verse 22 down to verse 24, the Bible says that when they began to sing and to praise, it said the Lord came down and laid ambushment against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir. 
and they began to come against one another until they destroyed one another. God came down to take over the battle. You see, whenever we get into praise, we invite God to step in. We invite God to step in. That's what we do. So in praise, we are invoking divine intervention. We are invoking divine intervention. In the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 25 down to verse 30, we are told there how that Paul and Silas were locked, to get, locked in prison. And he said at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And then after they finished praying, they began to sing praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. He says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. And the foundation of the prison was shaken. And all the doors were open. And everyone's bands were loosed. They began to praise. God stepped into their case and opened their prison door. Today, as you begin to praise, God will step into your case and open your prison door. If you believe it, say it louder, amen. I said, as you praise, God will step into your case and open your prison door. If you believe it, say it louder, amen. So we provoke divine intervention through praise. When you begin praising God, you are invoking intervention from God on your behalf. So praise invokes intervention. God steps in. And the unusual begins to happen. You see, when God steps into a case, things that cannot be explained begin to take place. From now on, I see God stepping into your case and turning every issue of concern into a testimony. If you believe it, say it louder, amen. In Psalm chapter 68, verse 24 and 25, the Bible tells us there, it says, We have seen thy goings, O Lord, thy goings in the sanctuary. It said, The singers went before, the players of instruments went after, and the damsels that were playing with their timbers. We have seen thy goings. We have seen your presence stepping in. And the key that provoked it was that the singers went before. Praise went first. And when praise went first, his presence went next into that matter and took over the, over the battle and turned it around for a testimony. That will be somebody's experience from now. If you believe that, you say loud amen. I said, if you believe that, you say loud amen. You know, in, in, in wrestling, many of us uh, know that there's what we call tag team wrestling. In tag team wrestling, usually you have two fighters fighting against two fighters. But in the tag team wrestling, one person enters the ring, the other person is outside the ring. Usually you have a small fighter with a big fighter paired together. And sometimes you find out that when the small fighter is fighting and struggling and it seems like he's being overwhelmed by the battle, he has to go towards the side of the ring and tap the big fighter. Then the big fighter enters into the ring. The small one jumps out. If the small one wants the big one to keep fighting, the major thing he has as a duty outside the ring is to be healing the one inside. As he keeps healing him, he keeps fighting. If he stops healing him and that one gets tired of fighting the fight, he taps the small one and the small one has to enter and continue from wherever the big one stopped the fight. Is somebody getting it? I know you can pray. Prayer is how you fight. You have fought many battles with prayer. You know, Paul and Silas, the Bible said they prayed. That's they fought it. When they discovered that the fight was more than them, they tapped God. God stepped into the, bat, into the ring. They stepped out. And the only way to get him to fight on their behalf was to keep hailing him. How were they hailing him? They were praising him. 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 And as they praised him, suddenly the ground shook. Boom! And the doors opened. I've never seen a calculated earthquake like that. Earthquake came, building didn't drop. It targeted the prison door. Targeted the chains on their feet. And every man's chain was loosed. Hand was loose. Leg was loose. Door was open. Why? God stepped into the ring to fight on their behalf. Somebody hearing my voice. Today, God will step in on your behalf. I said, God will step in on your behalf. And turn your battle into a testimony. If you believe it, say it loud, amen. Years ago, when I was privileged to be in our church in the UK, we had an issue. The 
court came and uh, the government came and put an injunction on the church building after Sunday service that no, no service must hold here. The next service was Tuesday. So I gathered the staff Monday morning and we began to pray. We praise. We have just entered into that facility so we began to praise and dance and jump and celebrate. We praise Monday. And then we were told to appear in court on Tuesday. Tuesday morning, began to praise. After the praise session, got into the office and one of the officials who had gone to the court called me and said, Pastor, something has happened. I said, what's it? He said, we got to this place and suddenly the government lawyers came to meet us and said, look, we want to withdraw the case. We're only asking that you should not make us pay your legal fees. So by the time they appeared before the judge that morning, the government just said, we're withdrawing the case. That was the end of the matter. Now the next service was Wednesday. Everybody appeared in church on Wednesday not knowing that a battle has been fought on our behalf. Between Monday and Tuesday, God stepped in and knocked the lawyer and said, my friend, withdraw that case. And suddenly the case was withdrawn on the spot because God took over the battle. Somebody hearing my voice today, as you are praising God, he will take over your battle. If you believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. Number three, it engenders divine health. You can praise your way out of sickness and praise your way into health. Why is that so? Proverbs 17 and verse 22, a merry heart doeth good like medicine. So as we begin to praise God, what is happening is that there is a spiritual medication going around our system. As we are celebrating God, it begins to lubricate your body and perfect whatever was out of order in your body. Today, whatever came with you as a sickness, as a disease, as a pain or as a discomfort, as you are praising God, every such siege shall be brought to a permanent end. If you believe it, say louder, amen. So we praise our way into divine health. You don't watch sickness, you praise it out. You praise it out. Have you not noticed every time the word of healing goes forth and suddenly we begin to break forth into praise? Instantly, you start you see miracles. Instantly. Because as you begin to praise God, the spiritual medication required to cleanse your system is going around your body. So it's chasing out every stranger that is tormenting your body from this day. Whatever stranger is afflicting, tormenting, oppressing your body by the encounter that you are having today in his presence. Particularly as you begin to praise God, that stranger is checked out of your system. <laughs> if you believe it, say a louder amen. amen. I said if you believe it, say a louder amen. amen. So it engenders divine health. Number four, it engenders access to fresh oil. The oil and unction upon the life of the praiseful is ever fresh. The Bible tells in Psalm chapter 92, verse 1 and verse 2, it says that it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and sing praise unto the name of the Lord Most High. It said to show forth his loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. And verse 10, it says, So my horn shall thou exalt as the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. So fresh oil answers to a life of praise. A praiseful believer never runs out of oil. What does the oil represent? It represents the power of God. The power of God is always manifesting in the life of the praiseful. The praiseful believer is a partaker of the freshness of oil. The oil never gets stale. And fresh oil means fresh impact. Fresh results. That means that the demonstration of God's power in the life of the praiseful is never past tense. It keeps enjoying fresh manifestations, fresh demonstrations of divine power. From this day onward, your testimony will never be still. Your testimony will never be past tense. <laughs> you will keep seeing newer and newer manifestations of God's power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we must keep praising God. We must keep celebrating God. You look at this commission, one of the trademarks of this commission is praise. One of the trademarks of this commission. Everywhere this commission is represented, praise, 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 is one of the major trademarks. And you discover that we never run out of testimonies. Every time you hear testimonies, testimony, this commission is more than 40 years old and over the years, testimonies have been fresh, new, manifestations of God, year after year, 
Think about it. Look at what God does in our midst. The things that happen here are just unusual. They are difficult to explain by natural laws. But they are so abundant. Every single Sunday, we have testimonies shared. We have testimonies in each service. Three services on Sunday. Two testimonies at each service. We have covenant our prayer. Monday to Saturday. Two testimonies in each one of those services. We have midweek service. Two testimonies in that service. And not all of them different, different testimonies. We go to WSF meeting. In our WSF centers, we have testimonies. That is fresh manifestations of God's power over and over again. Why? Because oil does not run dry where praises don't run out. When praises don't run out, oil never runs dry. When you and I keep praising God, it keeps renewing the oil upon our lives. And that provokes unusual manifestations of divine power. That will become my experience from now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe it, say a louder amen. amen. From now, your life will be an exhibition of divine power. Amen. I say your life will become an exhibition of divine power. Amen. If you believe it, say a louder amen. amen. What else? Number five, it facilitates access to revelation. So revelation keeps increasing where praise never ceases. It keeps increasing. There's access to revelation access to revelation. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 29 and verse 30. Look at what the Bible tells us there. It says, and you shall have a song as in the night when a holy solemnity is kept and gladness of heart as when one goeth with a pipe and cometh to the mountain of the Lord and to the mighty one of Israel. And when that happens, what will happen? The Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard. So revelation comes as a result of a life of praise. The more we commit ourselves to praising God, the more access we have to greater and brighter revelation. And like God's servant said in the first two services, revelation is the cure to all human frustrations. Anything that is frustrating a man, all that is required is light. Light is the cure to frustration. When revelation comes, frustration is terminated. Isaiah 60 verse 1 to 3, Arise, shine, for thy light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people. He said, The Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen on thee. He said, That Gentiles will come to thy light. That's revelation. Kings to the brightness of your rising. Verse 8, Who are these that fly as the doves, as the clouds, and as the doves to their windows? Verse 15, He said, he said Whereas you were forsaken and hated, you were before you were frustrated, everything looked upside down, but and no man went through thee. But I will make you an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. And verse 22, he said, a little one shall become a thousand, a small one shall become a strong nation, and I, the Lord, will hasten it. I will make it quick. I will make it quick. So revelation comes to terminate man's frustration, and it does it speedily. So as we keep praising God, we keep gaining access to brighter light. And brighter light means quicker results. Quicker change of story. I see that becoming somebody's experience. Anything that has defined solution in any one of our lives, this month, light will come that will turn it around for a testimony. If you believe it, say a loud amen. Number six, it empowers our access to divine guidance. As we keep praising God, he keeps guiding us. He shows us the way. Psalm chapter 16 verse 11, that will show me the path of life. He said, in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So God shows to the praiseful the way to go. When you are praising him, he opens your eyes. He shows you the way that you should go. He shows you the direction that you should go. What step you need to take. God servant shared a testimony. He said, when they were being brought here to Canaan land, the first time, on the way, he was agitated. He was angry. And you think his family were coming to do, how can you be bringing us all the way this, this distance? But by the time he got to the gate, he said he looked, gathered everybody, let's give thanks to God. The moment praise came on the scene, the Lord spoke, this is the place. Direction will always find the praiseful. Direction will always find the praiseful. Direction will always find the praiseful. When praise dries up, confusion rises up. But when praise continues to go up, direction continues to come down. So keep your environment activated with praise. 
As you are doing so, you are creating an environment for direction to flow. You will never suffer confusion again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number seven, it empowers our access to realms of signs and wonders. Signs and wonders begin to manifest as we begin to praise God. In, in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 11, who is like unto thee, O Lord, who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders. So the trigger for the wonders of God is the praises of man. When we begin to praise God, when we begin to lift our voices and celebrate God, then the God of wonders begins to manifest wonders in our lives. That will be our experience from now. And finally, number eight, it facilitates fulfillment of prophecies. A word that come to Abraham that you will begin to have seed and in your seed all the families of the earth will be blessed. And the Bible says that Abraham was not weak but was strong in faith and was giving glory to God. Romans chapter 4 verse 18 all the way down to verse 21. As a result of that suddenly the promise that God had given was brought to pass. You see prophetic decrees answer to those who continuously maintain the attribute of praise. When praise becomes your lifestyle, prophecies will begin to manifest and get fulfilled in your life. God has spoken concerning this year 2024. That's a year of fortune. Now listen, he has not changed his mind. That's the agenda for the year. As we begin to praise God, we begin to see his hand fulfill that promise in our lives. That will be our experience in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe it, say a loud amen. amen. From all the things we have seen so far, it's clear that the more praiseful we are, the more fruitful and decorated our lives become. So let's make praise our lifestyle. And we begin to see the hand of God manifest in unusual dimension. Now it's important to note this morning that praise is a mountain moving force. Praise is what? Now from scripture we understand that the enemy is ever resisting our access to our redemptive rights. Everything God has provided for us, Satan wants to resist it. The Bible is clear. Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse, 2, chapter 2 verse 24. I have given you Sion the Amorite and his land. is my provision for you. But begin to contend with him in battle. He will fight. He will not want to release it. 1 Corinthians 16 verse 9. A great door and effectual is opened unto you, but there are many adversaries. So to every provision of the kingdom, there is a contention from hell. Satan is ever against every one of the provisions of the kingdom for us. Every right we have. And that's why we require praise to bring down the wall of Jericho that may be standing between you and your promised land. You know, when Jericho was to be conquered, the place was strictly shut. We see that in the book of Joshua chapter 6. And the Bible says that the Lord told them, go around Jericho every day. And do that in silence. But on the seventh day, go around seven times. And at the last turn of going around, give a shout of praise. And they gave a loud shout when the trumpet was blown. That trumpet signaled the trumpet of praise. And as they gave a loud shout, the Bible says that the wall of Jericho fell down flat. Now we are told that that wall was so thick that you have six chariots can ride on the wall. Six chariots. That's how wide the wall was. But when praise went up, the wall came down and came flat. The Bible says that every one of them went straight before him. There's nobody there to climb anything. It was a level ground. That is praise leveled the barrier standing between them and the promised land. The good news for us is this. Whatever is a barrier between you and any provision of redemption. As your praise goes up today, that barrier shall be supernaturally leveled. Yeah. If you believe it, say loud, amen. Yeah. And why does it get leveled like that? Because when praise goes up, his presence comes down. And the presence of God causes mountains to melt like wax. Isaiah 64 verse 1, the Bible says to us there, Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens and come down that the mountains may flow at thy presence. The presence of God liquefies obstacles. Whatever it is that is standing between you and the promise of God, the agenda of God for your life, the provisions of redemption, 
today, those barriers shall be leveled off. If you believe it, say a loud amen. I said, if you believe it, say a loud amen. Do you not see the drama that was painted to us in that scripture in Psalm 114? He said, that what ailed thee, see, that you fled, you ran. If you know the sea, the sea is always is coming. It doesn't want to run. You know, that's why you have waves. If you go to the beach, you see waves. Bah! And if you come at different times, you discover that it's at different levels. The wave wants to continuously come. But this time, instead of waving forward, it began to wave backward. See, what are you running from? The water ran until there was a highway in the middle of the sea. So the psalmist said, see, what were you running from? Mountains, you are supposed to stand there. But you are now running like rams. Hills were running like little lambs. What is it that you were running away from? He said, tremble thou, O earth, at the presence of the Lord. Mountains are supposed to be unmovable, but when God's presence comes, the unmovable moves. Is somebody getting what God is saying? I don't know what seems to be unmovable in your life, but as you praise God today, whatever is unmovable will move for you. Is somebody getting what God is saying? So as we praise God, he moves the unmovable. That's why those who move in praise, God moves things on their behalf. For you today, every unmovable mountain will be shifted by the hand of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever represents a blockage to your glorious destiny in Christ shall be cleared of the path. You believe it, say a loud amen. As the praise of Paul and Silas went forth, the prison door opened up. Everything that was a discoloration to the adventure in Christ was taken off. From now, whatever it is that is a discoloration to your adventure in Christ will be taken off by your praise. You believe it, say a loud amen. I say, you believe it, say a loud amen. You believe it, say the loudest amen. Therefore, Expect the mighty moving power of praise to answer on your, in your favor today as you are now engaged in praise. Lift up your hand to heaven. Let's give thanks to God for his word I've received this morning. Father, thank you for your word. Blessed be your name. You are worthy of praise and glory. Thank you and thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. Before we go further, remember that the first prerequisite for anyone that is going to have his or her praise acceptable before God, is that that person must be born again. Until you are truly saved, your praise does not have any access to God. Wherever you are today, I'm not asking whether you are in church or whether you go to church, attend church or a member of the church. I'm asking whether you are in Christ. Are you a member of the family of God? Does God know you as his child? People may know you as a member of church. People may know that you go to church. People will know that you even serve in church, but the question is, that, does God know you as his child? Wherever you are this morning, you say, Pastor, I want to truly have a genuine relationship with God. I want him to know me as his child. I don't want to fake it. I want to get it right. Wherever you are this morning, quickly stand on your feet. I want to pray with you right now. I want you, Lord, to know me as your child. Quickly, stand on your feet. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I thought somebody was clapping. As these precious people stand everywhere, what a good God. Thank you, Lord. Secondly, there are those who need to rededicate their lives to Jesus. Something along the way has gone off course. You have missed it somehow, some way. And you want to return to Jesus so that you can be restored. You want to start afresh. You want to be reconciled back to Christ. So you can have a genuine, active, and very, very authentic walk with God. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus, quickly also stand on your feet. I want to pray with you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Stand everywhere. People of God, give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. He's worthy of all the glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, if you have done that, please stop filling your form right now. If you have done that, stop filling your form. Lift up your right hand before the Lord 
and just pray this prayer after me from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, make it loud and clear. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself, but I know you died for me. On the third day, you rose again to save me. Jesus, come into my life. Take control of me from this day forward. I will follow you. No turning back. I will serve you. No turning back. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Keep your hand lifted as I pray. Father, thank you today for these precious people. They have confessed Jesus as Lord. Therefore, give them grace to keep following you all the days of their lives and never turn back. Thank you for doing it, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's a brand new day for you. Please take your seat and quickly begin to complete the form that has been given to you. You submit that form to the official closest to you and they will give you a, a card. It's called a We Love You card. After the service, you take that card to any of our new convert tents. Those tents are outside the major entrances, six major entrances to the tabernacle. You drop the card there and then they will give you a gift from the church for your edification and to help you in your work with God. Very importantly, we have our Believers Foundation class. It takes place on Saturday. After the service, once you have submitted your details on that card, we'll send you the address where we have the Believers Foundation class closest to the address that you feel on that card. We have so many centers. One is surely close to where you live. Please ensure that you are physically there on Saturday. 7.30 is the time for the foundation class. Make sure you take advantage of it. The, the live class is far more impactful and more effective for many of us than the online. So make sure you are physically there. Only if your work does not permit you, then you can connect online. The address is on the screen, bfc.lfcww.org. Uh, and when you are connect online, make sure you do that with full focus, not partial attention, so you can get the most of these classes. Be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, like was earlier announced, we have also the, uh, the water baptism taking place at the same time on Saturday. So please make sure you come ready to have that encounter with God and to be a most glorious experience for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Congratulations. Right now, we are going to surely be going before the Lord in praise. Is somebody ready to praise God now? <laughs> Talk to me. Are you ready to praise God now? This is not going to be just praising as if one is participating. You are praising like you are the only one before God. It's a personal engagement. You are giving God the best of your dance, the best of your jump, the best of your song. You are giving you are, you are dancing as if it's only you before God this morning. And as you do that, it will step into your case and turn your matter to a testimony. Is somebody ready this morning to praise God? I said, is somebody ready to praise God now? Will you stand on your feet with me right now? Lift your hand before the Lord. I receive a fresh garment of praise to praise you acceptably. Quite quickly, get ready. We are set to praise him right now. I receive a fresh garment of praise to praise you today. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's praise him. Praise him personally. Let's ensure that all of our praise today is personal. Personal. Just you and your God. Giving him your best as we begin to see his hand at work in our midst. Let's celebrate him.
Shout hallelujah. As we have been praising him right now, fresh oil has already been released and bondages have been broken. So we are going to step into the next level of praise right now. And everyone who came here with one affliction or the other, you check your body, you discover it's gone, you jump out quickly and begin to share your testimony to the glory of Jesus. Is somebody ready to give God the glory this, af this afternoon? As the choir leads us, we are praising him, we are jumping, we are jubilating, and you are checking your system. You can see that the God of liberation has stepped in. Quickly jump out right now and share your testimony to the glory of God. Thank you, Lord.
Everybody shout hallelujah. Give Jesus a big, big hand of praise. Take your seat for a moment. I will take a few of these testimonies this afternoon. Iwe Omar John Paul. Iwe Omar John Paul came into the service this morning with neck pain and waist pain that has lasted for 10 years. But in the middle of the praise, the pains disappeared completely. Hallelujah. Ayodele Okulaja had a moving object all over the body for the past two years. But now in the course of the praise, the moving object checked out of the body and is free. Sister Judith B. Owens had suffered for, from depression for 12 years. But in the midst of the praise this afternoon, the spirit of joy came upon her and the depression is lifted. Are you celebrating Jesus? What a good God. Beauty Peter. Beauty Peter came in with one month of neck and waist pain, but now completely healed. Thank you, Jesus. If your clap is for Jesus, make it bigger, it's worthy. Happen Mercy Friday. Add one month of oughtness in the head. The head has been hot for one month. But right now, after the praise, the, she felt a cold sensation in the body and the head has completely come down. Are you celebrating Jesus? What an awesome God. Okenla Shil, one year pain in the knee, healed in the midst of the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Osaro Kelvin had partial blindness symptoms this morning. But right now, the eyes is clear and he can see. Are you celebrating the King of Kings? Is worthy of praise. Chidima Kalu, 10 years of body itching, healed in the midst of the praise. Thank you, Lord. Rachel Okosodo. One week of swollen leg healed in the course of the praise this morning. Are you celebrating Jesus, the doer of every one of these mighty works? Will you stand on your feet with me this morning and let's give Jesus a big, big, big hand of praise and give him the glory for all that he has done as we receive our Father to bless us right now. Make that hand bigger for Jesus. He is worthy of all the praise. Now, I'd like you to leave here this morning with the understanding that praise is a weapon of war and never returns defeated from battle. Whatever battle cannot be too strong for God, it's no issue for praise to deliver. Because what praise does is to invoke divine presence, invoke divine intervention, that's more than enough to win any war. So leave here this morning with the understanding that praise is a weapon of war. <laughs> Is stronger than fasting and stronger than prayers.
with power enough to bring the dead back to life. Therefore, the last battle you lost is the last we ever lose. Yeah. Somebody is praising his way out of that imprisonment today. Yeah. Somebody is praising her way out of slavery today. Yeah. Somebody is praising his way out of sickness and disease today. You are pressing your way out of the siege of death on any organ of your body yeah. and anything around you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. It's a most neglected weapon of war. It has been messed up by the world. People just sing to entertain. People jump and jump, don't know what they are singing. Because the devil knows how much power is in it. So the best thing to do is to go and corrupt it. May praise not get corrupted in your life. Yeah. May this woman going to deliver victory in all your ways. Yeah. I will bless the Lord at all times. A spirit shall continually be in my mouth. So it's not a church affair. It's a lifestyle. I therefore decree that thanksgiving and praise becomes your new lifestyle. Yeah. You will testify this month. Yeah. Your testimony begins this week. Yeah. It starts today. Yeah. Somebody's landing a miracle job this week. Somebody shedding tears of joy by testimony this week. Yeah. If that applies to you, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. May our praise and thanksgiving remain acceptable to God. Yeah. When our praise goes up, God comes down. May God come down to each one's affair this week. May your God come down for you this week. May your God come down for you this week. Now, one practical way to do that is get anointed praise music going in your house, going in your bedroom, going in your car. Fill your environment with praise. Let God fill your environment. That will make all the difference in your life. Yeah. So, dancing is praising God. He said, let them praise him in their dance. So, when your mouth is tired of singing, your body will be shaking. Let somebody be playing, you be dancing unto Jesus. Anointed, not just any jack, any junk. Anointed songs of praise. Songs that speak. Not songs that just shout. Songs that speak. Speaking to yourself in Psalms and hymns and, and, and spiritual songs. Get hold of some things. The, the choir has a lot of um, DVD and other stuff. Get hold of those things and dance your way out of the unwanted situation of your life. Don't wait for things to happen. Make them happen. Don't wait for things to happen. Make them happen. Prop your praise life by getting anointed praise songs, playing in your bedroom. I was playing one this morning at 4 a.m. and dancing and getting myself ready into God's presence. Please engage on a personal note. Engage on a personal note. General praise won't bring your personal victory. Engage on a personal note. You come into church all through this month, make sure you are set to praise God on a personal note. On a very personal note. And you have your personal testimonies. In the name of Jesus. The week is declared your week. Everything shall be answered in your favor this week. You will testify this week. Yeah. This week will be a week of explosive testimony. Yeah. The kind we have never had in this ministry will happen this week. Yeah. It will happen in your own life. Yeah. You will no longer be entertained by testimonies of, testimonies of others. Your testimonies will make others laugh. Yeah. People will laugh with you this week. 
in the name of Jesus. Now watch. Everyone on the go with Jesus returns with joy. And the 70 return with joy. Remain on duty advanced in the kingdom of God. Get hooked into the Jesus dream. I sent a message around to everybody this week. Get hooked onto Let the Jesus dream get you captured. Live with it. Live the Jesus dream as a lifestyle. You'll never run out of joy. The good news is that no one here will know depression. God is turning your sorrow to joy. It's turning your mourning to dancing. This week is your week. This week we answer for you. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your two hands everyone and celebrate the faithfulness of God. Magnify him. It's everything. The week is loaded for you. Loaded in your favor. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Next Sunday, endeavor to invite someone to come along with you. We are dealing with invisible battles. Battles you can't see Yet, the effect cannot be denied. Jesus, we win those battles in your behalf. Yeah. And you'll be celebrating all your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Shall we together? All the ones in front, your testimonies are declared permanent. Yeah. The ones red and not red, they are permanent. Yeah. None of us who are in the house, these are pointers of the fact that God has visited you also. Yeah. So maintain your praise frequency. Don't let it go down for any reason. And your temple will manifest in full flesh. In Jesus' name. Shall we together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship? Thank you so much for listening to the end. I pray that whatever that you have listened today, you are not going just to keep it, but you are going to do what god has told you through this message and please kindly if you're new here or you are not so i mean you have not subscribed kindly just click on the red button below the video and subscribe to this my channel and also you can share this video with someone else thank you so much and see you in my next video bye